All right, so it's for morning on my endoscopy. Endoscopy? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And I thought I'd make a video about it. Two and a half years ago, I had my first endoscopy and that was under sedation. And today I'm gonna to be having my endoscopy under local anaesthetic. So I thought it'd be an interesting perspective to compare the two. I've got my trusty NHS endoscopy book. Uh, so I'm gonna have a look through that and explain a bit of the differences between the sedation um, and the non-sedation experiences. And then I'll go, to, go for the appointment and report back on which I preferred. So diving in, an endoscopy is when they put a tube, I'm not sure if it's down the mouth or down the nose, and it goes down your esophagus to your gut and your bowel. And it's got a little camera on there which can allow doctors to have a look around and see what's happening in your gut. Now apparently an endoscopy is the best method of looking at the lining of your upper digestive tract. I think they can do um, MRIs or x-rays uh, but they just don't give the same uh, information to doctors. So if you can have an endoscopy it's probably the best option. It says during the investigation we may need to take some tissue biopsies which is a mermaid of like a little claw or something I guess and they just take a little bit of the gut lining just a little micro bit and then they can study that under a microscope and they can see a bit more about what's happening and, and do some tests on it uh, to establish whether you've got any diseases. So on to preparing for your procedure uh, there's some rules on eating and drinking so you're not allowed to eat for at least six hours before the appointment. Now for the question on everyone's lips sedation or no sedation? So sedation, it says here, is not a general anaesthetic. Well, I couldn't really tell the difference when I had my sedation. Um, I can't remember any of it, and I, I presume there is no pain involved. Uh, so it does take you very much out of it, um, as far as my experience goes. It says this will make you slightly drowsy and relaxed, but not unconscious. You will still be able to hear what's said in the procedure and follow simple instructions. This might be the best option for those a bit more nervous about the procedure. Um, but the reason I'm not having it this time around, because for two weeks after my last endoscopy, I had a really, really bad sore throat. Probably the worst and certainly the longest sore throat I've ever had. And someone explained to me that that might be because when you're a bit more relaxed or unconscious, uh, you can't necessarily control your gagging reflex so much. So... And that might have caused the damage to my throat. I don't think this happens in everyone's cases, uh, but it was bad enough for me to want to try the local anaesthetic this time around. So it will be interesting to see how that compares. The other big advantage of a local anaesthetic is that you can drive home afterwards. So rather than arranging for someone to come and collect me um, or stay in the car while I'm having the procedure, I can just um, drive home myself um, as soon as they let me go. And also I'm planning on working this evening, which I may not have been able to if I'd had the sedation. So that's all I wanted to mention from the booklet. I'll have a procedure in a few hours. So see you then. Okay, I'm in the car, just about to head off to my appointment. I've got my hospital letter. I've got some food and drinks for afterwards uh, because I have a feeling I will be quite thirsty and hungry. Um, with the local anaesthetic, unfortunately, you're not allowed to drink uh, or eat for an hour afterwards, I think, because uh, you might get asphyxiated, I believe is the word, uh, when the food might go into your lungs, something like that. So yeah, I'll see you soon. Okay, so I've now had the endoscopy. I'm filming this a few days later so I could give you a fuller account of the after effects. Before I get into it, I just wanted to say that I plan on releasing more health and psychology videos. So if that's your cup of tea, uh, press the subscribe button and then the alert bell and you'll get an alert every time I have a new video. So onto my experience, this time without sedation. First, I just want to say a big thank you to all the NHS staff who make a massive difference really. Like if you're a bit nervous going into this procedure, having some friendly faces around really makes a big difference. So the day basically went like this. I arrived at the hospital about an hour before my procedure uh, and having waited in one waiting room and then the next, uh, I did have to fill out lots of forms with uh, someone. Luckily I wasn't doing the form filling, I was just signing at the bottom. And once that was all done, I was taken by a nurse um, into the 
room where the procedure would take place. In hindsight, I think I was a little bit naive going into the procedure, probably uh, based on my good experience last time with the sedation. But then again, a bit of naivety might have been a good thing going into this procedure. However, it did mean I was in for a bit of a surprise because it was completely different than my sedation experience. Once I was on the hospital bed, they told me to open my mouth and they sprayed some uh, banana tasting local anaesthetic into my mouth and asked me to swallow. And it wasn't really uh, a nice banana taste, uh, but that certainly wasn't the worst bit about the procedure. I also asked to have something called Endonox, which I believe is nitric oxide, which I think they give to uh, pregnant women uh, when they're giving birth. Um, so I just inhaled that through a tube um, took several puffs of that. I seemed to make a bit of a difference at first, but uh, but once they started putting the tube down my throat, uh, it didn't seem to make any difference at all. So before they put the tube in, they gave me a mouth guard to bite down on, which meant I couldn't actually close my mouth and it was quite difficult to swallow. Then they got the endoscopy tube and um, put it down my mouth and throat basically. Uh, so I think when it got to about this point, they asked me to swallow and I guess that's to get it down further. It wasn't the nicest experience in the world, but this is where I was glad I had some experience in meditation and psychological tricks, for want of a better word. When something's been shoved down your throat, you naturally want to gag and try and get it out. It's like the dentist, but ten times worse. But I found it quite helpful to counter this by repeatedly saying the word acceptance in my head. Uh, and acceptance, if you think about it, is the exact opposite to gagging, which is refusal. Uh, so... I just kept saying acceptance, acceptance, as it slowly went further down my esophagus and stomach. It wasn't the worst pain in the world, but it was more painful than I was expecting. In this instance, I don't think manning up and trying to fight it is the right response. Instead, you just need to acknowledge the discomfort, and there's something about acknowledging something and not trying to hide away from it that allows you to accept it. But I can see why some people would find this experience traumatic. You're completely out of control, like once it's gone in, you're going to have a hard job getting it out quickly. But the other side to that is if you relax, there shouldn't be any problems. It's a pretty safe procedure, so you just have to have faith in that. And then it becomes just about your ability to control your mind. It's a bit like I'm a celebrity, if you've seen that program, where celebrities do um, disgusting things, but uh, really, you know, they're perfectly safe. They wouldn't be doing anything which is dangerous for them. Just like the endoscopy, it's a pretty safe procedure. Um, you just have to get over your own fears. It's also good to know that it doesn't last too long. I think I was probably only in there for five or 10 minutes, although you do somewhat lose track of time. I'm one of those people, like most people I think, who I can endure some pain as long as I know how long it's gonna be for. If I have no idea how long it's gonna last for, that's when it starts to become a bit harder to manage. I went through a lot of the procedure without gagging, but towards the end of the procedure, I did have a few gags. Luckily, this didn't turn into a gagging fit, which, uh, probably could in turn turn into a quasi panic attack, which isn't really what you want when you've got something inside you that you can't get out instantly. I personally dealt with the gagging by just acknowledging that it's normal to gag. And this acceptance, as it were, almost helps you relax whilst you're gagging and prevents it turning into a full blown gagging fit. Another psychological trick I used was from a book uh, by Anthony DeMello called Awareness. And he argues for the benefits of observing oneself objectively. Most of us either hide our emotions or get too caught up in them. This is where it's useful to imagine yourself in the third person, as it were. Like how you'd imagine an out-of-body experience. Suddenly, you're removed from the discomfort. The discomfort is still there, but you're not um, attaching to that discomfort, as it were. Um, I know some people talk about the difference between pain and suffering. Pain is something which is hard to avoid, it's, it's there. Uh, suffering is the feeling that I am in pain. Pain doesn't necessitate the feeling that I am in pain. So if you just observe it, you're just observing the pain. And that pain doesn't lead on to the feeling of I am in pain. And once you're removed from that pain in a way, you start to think, why do I care about this person's pain as opposed to anyone else going through pain at this exact moment? That might all sound a bit weird and hard to comprehend, but I thought it might help some of you, so I thought I'd throw that in there. I find it's a useful tool to have in your toolkit uh, when you're going through anything difficult in life. Now, I got really interested in psychology and mindfulness about two years ago. Um, so that was after my first procedure, which I had with sedation. So I'm really not sure how I would have coped then if I did not have a sedation. Experiences like doing the endoscopy without sedation are great uh, tests, as it were, 
to test where you are in your psychological development. However, you shouldn't feel ashamed if you don't think at this moment you're ready to cope with something like doing an endoscopy without sedation. Like with everything else, you just need to accept it and that might mean using sedation in your case. Sedation really is a completely different experience. Uh, so if you're a bit nervous, I really think sedation is probably right for you. The only real disadvantage is that you can't work or drive for a period afterwards. But that's a minor inconvenience uh, compared to what some people go through psychologically uh, in the traumatic build-up and experience of the procedure. So I just book it for when you got a day or two off. So now onto my throat. This was the worst thing about the last procedure. Although I had sedation, I had a pretty bad sore throat for at least two weeks after the procedure. Um, I don't think everyone has this. I had to use ibuprofen to reduce the pain and that's not great if you already got gut issues. This time without sedation, I do feel my throat probably is better than it was last time. It was actually quite good for a few hours after the procedure, but strangely it's got slightly worse since then. And every time I swallow, it hurts. Um, but the rest of the time, it's fine. And you only swallow, I don't know, once a minute most of the time. Eating isn't too bad. So perhaps going without the sedation was the right choice. But I've still got a sore throat. So if you're more worried about being able to cope with it psychologically, I think uh, there's a lot of arguments for going with sedation. So what are your thoughts? I'll try to answer any comments you leave below. And if you've had the procedure, it would be really interesting to hear about your experience. As I said, I plan to put out more health and psychology related content. So if that interests you, uh, pressing the subscribe button won't be enough anymore, unfortunately. You have to now press the subscribe button and the alerts bell, and then you'll get the alerts uh, for whenever I produce a new video. So hopefully you got some value from this video. Leave your thoughts below, and I wish you all the best with your endoscopy.